uh, Yaya or Fool or something, and you look at it, and your heart goes out to them when you see the image of them. And you love them, and again, uh, actually, if you pray to them, they're in the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> now, what I uh, like to do is I like to uh, ask them, uh, uh, pray to them that they may ask the Lord our God as intercessors to, again, to help us in our everyday life. So it's a good question. Why do we have icons? Why do we venerate them? Because they are, again, fellow Christians who are great in the Lord, and we see them, and we, and we adore their, uh, uh, their presence. Anyway, good question, and God bless you all. Yeah. 
presence first of all, he has given to the poor. Sanctify those who love with you in your house. 
Lord, our Father, in the return, by the divine power, do not forsake us and hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to all the public service, to the armed forces, and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is still God comes from you, the Father of life. And to you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever, and to the Lord.
Within your mm -hmm. being solar, where all your saints repose, you give rest also to the soul of your servant, and for you alone are immortal.
to see all these things. So this goes in with, with the, this gospel that we, are, uh, that we hear today. There were 12 lepers. They had this terrible disease. They could not be in the community. They had to be together. They had to be like uh, 50 feet apart. I don't know what it was. Like 20 or 50 feet, whatever it was. And they, had, they couldn't be downwind because they believed that people would catch the uh, leprosy. And that was a terrible disease, eating flesh disease kind of a thing. And, and they came up and they all screamed out to, Judah, uh, to uh, Christ, save us, because they saw all his miracles and everything. And he said, go to the priests. Because in those days, to be cleansed, you had to go to the priest. He had to uh, check you uh, as maybe even a doctor, but it was the priest. It wasn't doctors. It was the priest, and they would give you the okay that you have, don't have leprosy anymore. You could go back to your homes or wherever you are, and you could do that. And he did that. And he said, go to the priest. They were, they were walking down to the priest, not even, they didn't even get to them. And they saw that they were all cleansed. They were cured. They didn't even have to go to the priest. And one of them came back. One of them came back. In gratitude. And he went down and fell at the uh, Jesus' feet. And he said, thank you. Thank you. And he fell down at his feet. And what did Jesus say? Where's the other nine? Where's the other nine? Have they forgotten already? Of this terrible disease. They can go home. They can do all things. And so quick to forget. Not only did they forget, they didn't even give it any mind. We're healed. Let's go. Forget. Forget it. One out of ten. And I've always said it myself, this is my own opinion, it doesn't come from any scripture or anything like that. I've always said it of the whole, all the Christians, and I think uh, other religions too, one-tenth, one-tenth are usually the faithful. Only one-tenth, that's the way I see it. Our mailing list when I first came here was over a, a thousand. Just not quite, but I think just a little under a thousand. I call people, you're orthodox, you're this, you know, all that kind of thing, and, and we, uh, we get a hundred. One tenth. About, about that much. You look at the, the Roman church, the same thing. You go to the Roman church and they're packed. They're packed. But how many Roman Catholics do we have here in this area? If you get a thousand in the church, you have another, another ten thousand outside. Because that's, that's the way it is. That's our geographic, you know, uh, makeup up here that they have that many Catholics. The Jews, the same thing. The rabbis complain too, especially with the COVID, just like us. They say the people, it's hard to get the people back. Where's the gratitude, for goodness sakes? Where is it? People do good for you and you don't do good for them? Or you forget? Why? One-tenth? And I'm not saying that because we're here, we're all uh, gracious. I don't know. I don't know. I include myself. I don't know how gracious I am about things. Anyway. But anyway, uh, how, how, you know, how do we know? How do we know? We have to know that when things go wrong and, go, and, and, you, uh, and, and, and to, to see people who have done things for you or your parents, uh, some people, the children, uh, uh, betray their parents. Uh, they don't care how they were raised, uh, even though they were so good and given all these things, given a place to, uh, to, to sleep and, and to do all the things that they do, go to school, pay, you could pay for their schools, you could do all of that kind of stuff, and you'll have ungrateful children. Why? Why? I think because we don't have Christ so much in our hearts. That's what I believe. If we knew Christ that much, how gracious he is to us, how good he is to us, we'd be able to bring that back to others. And that's what he says. We should love your Lord, your God, with all your heart and all your mind, and your neighbor as well. And if we don't love our God as much with all our hearts and with all our soul, we would be ungracious possibly. We could be ungracious to the people. So here we have... Judas, the betrayer, ungrateful, and he, uh, to the Lord, 
And there are people today that are ungrateful, don't even know how to say thanks to the Lord. People who are not here, oh, I say my prayers here, and I say my prayers there, which is a lot of hooey, I believe. The people, when they say that, they're saying it because I'm a priest and they want me to hear it. I was an altar boy, when? 40 years ago. Oh, really? And you haven't entered a church since? And you really haven't entered a church since? Where's the gratitude to God? Who's all that he's given us? For all that we have? Where is it? Judas paid the, the fatal price. He betrayed the Lord. Not only that, if we betray each other, who knows where we will go? Ingratitude is a place not in heaven. Heaven is a place of gratitude, of love, of giving, of kindness, of compassion. That's what paradise is. And if we don't have it, it seems that we don't belong there. Because it becomes, if I'm not grateful to the other, it is for me. Everything is for me. I am the only one that counts. Nobody else. Ingracious thinking. Ingracious doing. And we have it in the world, and the world is, is loaded with those kind of people. But anyway, if you are gracious, if you're loving, if you ask forgiveness, if you do all those things, that's all you need for yourself, that I think I can do that. I'm gracious, I love my neighbor, I do the best that I can for everybody else, and God sees all of this, gracious or ingracious, and he is our judge. So I would say to us, worry about that. That's what the fear of God means. The fear of God means, if I'm a sinner, I fear God. I fear God more because I don't know. Have the fear of God. I ought to do that because of the fear of God. I ought to be this because of the fear of God. And that's how it works. God sees every single one of us and he knows every thought that we have. So we do have a gracious and loving God. And may he bless you all.